this is Lori and welcome to my project on creating a binary counter with a Raspberry Pi and Python. So in this project we'll use uh, five LEDs and we'll count from 0 to 31 in binary um, using the LEDs as a representation of a binary number with the lights being on and off to represent the zeros and ones. So that's kind of the beginning part or beginner level of this project. Uh, there's a little bit more advanced level of the project and that's where I added an OLED display to the project so that we could also see the uh, binary number printed out on a screen right next to the LEDs. So if you're a beginner at this I would just uh, stick with doing the LED portion of the project and uh, not work on the OLED because that does take a little more uh, effort. Um, but if you're uh, feeling up to it, uh, you can see how I added one to my project. So here's the circuit I used. And so first we'll focus on, um, you know, the connection of the five LEDs to the Raspberry Pi. So in this case, I used a, a Raspberry Pi with an extension board to bring the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins onto the board. Now here are the five LEDs and they're connected to ground and then you can see that they're also connected to a current limiting resistor and then that is connected back to a GPIO pin on the Raspberry Pi. So that's how we'll control the LEDs and turn them on and off as we need for the counting. Now the advanced part of this is to add in this small um, OLED display and it uses something called I squared C to communicate and so you can see there's four pins that are uh, behind it and you push them into the breadboard uh, you need to connect to ground and power and so you'll have to look at the labels for the board you actually have to see how yours are arranged and then there are two more pins that will connect into uh, the I squared C pins on the Raspberry Pi and that's how you'll uh, put things on the display here. So here's a picture of how that looks in real life. So you can see my OLED right here, and then here are the five uh, LEDs that'll be lit for the binary counting. So just a bit of a refresher on binary numbers. When we count in decimal, we have 10 symbols, 0 through 9. So we go 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9. And then we've run out of symbols, so then we add a one to the left, and then we go through the symbols again, and we keep doing that as needed as we increase. In binary, we only have two symbols, a zero and a one. So as we go through it, zero, one, then we've run out of symbols, so we move a one to the left and keep going. So that's the main uh, difference between binary and decimal, and they're very similar except for the number of symbols we have to represent numbers. Um, I have a table here of the first 16 um, binary numbers and their decimal equivalents. And you can see that uh, I have uh, four columns here, and this is the ones, two, four, and eights place for a binary number. And uh, we'll see how that figures into how we convert it. And so you can kind of see how the pattern goes um, to get all the way up to 15 the first 16 numbers, which includes zero. So if we pick one of these numbers, how about 1101, and we want to know what its decimal value is, we would say, well, we have one in the eighths place, and we have a one in the fourth place, and we have a zero in the twos place, and a one in the ones place. And so if we multiply that and add it all up, we get 13. So this number is equivalent to 13 in decimal, and that's what we see here in the table. Now I added the table just because I, I think the symmetry of uh, binary numbers is really pretty. If you notice in the ones column, you can see we alternate between zero and one. And then in the twos column, we have two zeros and two ones. And in the four, it's four and four and eight, it's eight and eight. And it just keeps going in powers of two as we move across and need more and more uh, digits to represent numbers. So that's just a little bit about binary numbers and hopefully that'll help you recognize how we're going to do this counting. So here's just a little information about the uh, display that I'm using in this project. Um, it's SSD 1315 
and uh, it uses I2C communication. It has 128 by 64 uh, pixels. And my particular one has uh, yellow on the top and blue on the bottom, but I've seen different variations of colors. Sometimes it's just all one color. Sometimes you have multiple colors on these. Uh, it has four pins to connect uh, it up. Uh, power pin that can be 3.3 up to 5 volts, a ground, and then the two pins for the I2C communication. Now the tricky thing about these is figuring out what kind of library to use to uh, control the display. And uh, I did a little bit of uh, digging around and I found that it seems like most people are using the Adafruit uh, SSD 1306, which is a very similar, if almost not identical, uh, as display as the one I'm using. And uh, that library does work with the, the display that I have. Um, but it was pretty complicated, and I have to admit I was like getting a little frustrated. Um, felt like I was learning a whole new programming language just to write to a display. And then I, I found this nice uh, helper uh, library called OLED Text that, that someone uh, thankfully put together that simplifies the uh, interface to the Adafruit library. And so I left a link here for that if you're interested, because that's what I ended up using. Um, to uh, control the display. So now we'll uh, look at the code and we'll see a demo of the binary counter. So the first thing we'll do in the code is import the needed libraries. Um, so we'll use RPI GPIO, the time library to have the sleep function. Then we'll need uh, from the board library, we'll need uh, I squared C uh, functions and import the bus IO library, and then this OLED text library so that we can communicate uh, with, the, um, with the OLED screen. And, and all of these here are needed to use the OLED display. Um, next thing we'll need to do is set up all the pins. Uh, so we'll use the BCM numbering system because we're using an extension board for uh, Raspberry Pi, and that's what's displayed on the extension board. And then here are the five uh, LEDs that I'll use for the binary counter, and we'll set them up as outputs. Uh, set up a short delay time, because as it's counting, I want it to hold uh, you know, the binary number for a second or so, so that you can, you can see the number as it goes by. Um, then we'll need to create uh, some objects to uh, control the OLED and set up the correct uh, pixel dimensions and so forth to use the display. Um, and then I'm picking a particular layout that has three lines. It can actually have some icons on it too, but I'm just using one of the three lines, but it doesn't matter. This looks good. Um, and then I'm just saying, hey, make sure uh, as soon as I send that to you to go ahead and display it. So there's a fair amount of control in this library, and I'm sure I'll spend some more time uh, trying to learn uh, all its secrets. Then here in the while true loop, um, I uh, do a for loop and go through the numbers of 0 to 31 by 1s. And to, to get the binary number I want as I'm counting, I'm just using a format function that will return a five-digit um, binary number back to me, I'm calling that a string. I print that actually to the screen. I actually also send it to the OLED display. And then I pull off the parts of the string, so the string is just zeros and ones. I pull those parts, I pull that string apart into its individual digits and assign it to each of those pins, the, the LED pins. And then that will light up the LED pins uh, using the correct um, binary representation. So a zero will be interpre interpreted this as turn the LED off, and a one will say turn the LED on. And then we'll have that short delay so you can see the number. Uh, for a second, and then it'll move on to the next one. And it'll keep counting until we do a keyboard interrupt. That's what the try and accept is for. And then we'll go ahead and make sure all the LEDs get turned off, that we clear the OLED display. So I'm just sending a blank line to it and do a GPIO cleanup. So now let's see the demo. So here's the circuit. Let's take a quick look at it. Raspberry Pi, ribbon cable, extension board. There are the five LEDs that will light the binary sequence and the OLED screen that I've added to the project so we can see the binary number 
at the same time. So we'll kick it off. And there we go. And it's counting away. bit more to go. And all the way through. Now I'll just keep going until I uh, do the control C to stop it. It was a great project and uh, I want to thank you for watching.